Hello, Periscope land. I'm back. I am back. I am finally out of my turkey coma. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Ask Sarina Live. This is my weekly show that I do at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday to talk about all things world of work as well as pop culture and everything else. Thank you for joining NBC Corp. Hello, JPJFF. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank you. Let me turn this around. Hello, how are you? Welcome. For those of you that are new to me and my scopes, I am Janine Truitt. I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC based in Long Island, New York. Thank you for joining 1950 Shane. Welcome to Ask Sarina Live. Thank you for joining me. Um, so Talent Think Innovations is my baby, and um, it basically is a business that provides talent management strategies for businesses. So I help businesses figure out how they can better attract, retain, and develop their people. So I'm your gal. So tonight, uh, what's going on tonight? I took a little break last week because it was Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a great holiday if you celebrated Thanksgiving. And um, I just kind of hung out with the family. It was great. I ate a lot of food. I kind of went into a coma and the rest is history. And this week has been a little rough getting back into the swing of things. So I feel like it's Thursday and I'm finally catching my second win. So that's pretty much what's going on with me. Other than that, right before this, I was watching The Wiz live with my kids. So freaking awesome. I don't know if any of you guys were watching The Wiz live um, and also participating on Twitter. Just a really great production. I really enjoyed it. I was like tied between doing my makeup, getting my hair done, and like watching it like I had to literally pull myself away to get ready for this. So that's a little bit about that. So if you want to, I'd love to see where people are from, what your occupation is, throw it into the chat box because I'm seeing a lot of new people on here. So um, let me know where you're from because I love to engage with you. Um, tonight's topic is, am I my employer's keeper? And this is a topic that I've wanted to tackle for some time because it actually hits home for me. It's actually something I've been through and I see it coming up more and more and more, um, you know, as we become, I guess, a more litigious society, if you will. And so just going to kind of explore that tonight and hopefully you will chime in with your own thoughts on the topic as well. So this whole concept of, you know, am I my employer's keeper? The reason why I use that title is there's a bit of a, a dichotomy that you have to deal with when you're an employee with an employer and they ask you to do certain things, right? So they're gonna ask you to do certain things within the scope of your job and you're going to execute those things. But what if the things that your employer is asking you to do is not necessarily something that is ethical or legal, what do you do? And it's one of those questions that's hard to answer because the first thing for you to think of is, well, anything my employer asks me to do or anything that one of the leaders asks me to do, I just do it because that's my job and anything else would be seen as insubordination. The problem with that is that I'm seeing a lot more case law around people being personally liable for, let's say, mishaps, missteps that they take on the job if it proves to be illegal or unethical or whatever the case is. But let's deal with legality, for instance. There are instances in which an employee could be personally held liable for some kind of misstep and be personally sued. And so that kind of like adds a whole nother layer to things because then it's like if I can be personally sued, if this is not going to be on the backs of my employer, if they're not going to kind of hold my hand through this process, then 
the question is, is it worth it for me to do everything that I'm asked to do? Or do I have to kind of take a step back as an employee? Thanks for joining DTubs. Do I have to kind of take a step back and start to think a little bit longer about whether I take certain steps in the workplace? So here's where I'm going with it. I worked for an organization. I was This was back when I was working in healthcare for about like eight years. And so they were a federal contractor. And so we were governed by this organization called the Office of Federal, Com um, federal Contract Compliance Programs, better known as the OFCCP if you work in HR. And so essentially, we had certain regulations we had to adhere to. OCCP kind of governs the hiring process and the whole affirmative action thing. So as a federal contractor, you have a heightened responsibility to make sure that you are affirm affirmatively hiring people of color and women and people with disabilities and veterans and this kind of thing. And so at that time, uh, we were going through an audit and this was an organization that was just very, very politically driven, extremely, to a fault. Actually, this is why I left them. Uh, thank you for the hearts. I appreciate that. And so basically, I found myself constantly having to funnel people into positions that weren't really always the best qualified for the position. So it would be like, you know, hey Janine, we have a VIP hire for you. And this person is somebody that CEO, who I won't name, um, met in their Walgreens this weekend. And they were the pharmacist behind the counter and he found them to be just lovely and he wants you to hire them immediately into a radiology tech position, let's just say. And many times, I mean, there were instances where people were qualified, but many times they weren't qualified. They did not have the requisite um, skills, knowledge, et cetera, to do the job. But what was I to do? I was just doing my job. Told me to hire them, I got them hired. Fast forward, I end up in this audit with that employer, with OFCCP, and of course, you know, they do this random pulling of files and they kind of trace the steps back to see that there's a consistent process throughout everything and that you can justify your hiring decisions. And so they pulled one of my files and it wasn't for said pharmacist tech, but it was for somebody else. And so we're all in this office. It's me, it's the VP, it's my director of talent acquisition, it's another manager. And basically, you know, they're all looking at me and asking me questions about this file. And suddenly it turns to this kind of thing. Well, Janine, if you knew that the person wasn't qualified, why did you hire them? And I'm looking at the VP, I'm looking at the director of talent acquisition, I'm looking at the other person in the office and I'm saying, all three of you told me that I had to hire this person. All three of you people told me to get this done ASAP because it came from the CEO. And so here we are with the auditor and I suddenly realized that somehow they're not here to hold my hand through this and they're not here to help me and that basically I'm being thrown under the bus and I better just think really quickly in the moment and cover my behind so I can get the hell out of this office before I kill somebody. And so it was kind of like my first awakening to this idea that like nothing happened to me. So let me just preface that nothing legally happened to me. But, you know, had there been a pattern with me with doing this kind of thing and with them not backing me as my employer, um, quite foreseeably, I was just kind of a fish out there waiting on my own and you know, who knows what could have happened. I could have been held personally liable for all of that. And in that moment, I guess I was because nobody was backing me. None of them fessed up to the fact that they had given me orders to execute this thing. So, you know, my case wasn't necessarily a legal consideration more so than it was like ethical. Because again, because we received government funds, 
we were held to the standard that said that we needed to basically put the right people in the position, right? And it needed to be the best suited person for that position. So, you know, it was, again, for me, it was one of those things, like literally my stomach was in my throat because I just didn't see it for a mile coming at me that anybody in my organization would have thrown me under the bus like that, one. Two, I'm sitting in there with an auditor, so I'm kind of thinking, like, I better just be careful what I say because either I say something and I throw them under the bus or I further make myself and the whole situation look worse, and then what do you do? And then I have to deal with the ramifications of how they feel about what I said in that meeting. So it's such a sticky, sticky thing, but here's my feeling. I moved on from that job. And I went into another organization and the organization that followed was just as sloppy about how they did things from an ethical and legal perspective. Except this time around, when they asked me to do things that weren't exactly ethical or legal, I pushed back. I pushed back. Um, and so, you know, it became more of not that I won't do it, but it became more of a conversation around here's what we're up against, here's what I'm personally up against, and I don't feel comfortable doing this in the way that you're asking me. I had to learn to cover my ass, basically. And so I say this to kind of share with you that I think a lot of employees have to start to think this way because, you know, we could be moving in a direction where the employer is going to be liable for certain things and on other things, given whatever guidance regulations you're dealing with, you can be personally liable and you've got to take care of you. Like, I don't know about you, I can't afford to be personally sued, nor do I like to be sued personally. So the idea that I would go into an organization and allow my leadership to kind of pontificate to me what I should or should not be doing with me knowing what the ramifications are behind it. There has to be a conversation, it just does. I'm just gonna reset quickly um, because I know some people came in and they might be like, well, what are we talking about here? What's going on? So again, I am Janine Truitt. I am the uh, Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC based in New York. And you are watching Ask Serena Live. This is my weekly show that I do every week on Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tonight I'm talking about the topic in specific is, am I my employer's keeper? So essentially I'm sharing my stories about how I've been kind of thrown under the bus or made to do things that were um, maybe not ethical or maybe teetered on being a bit illegal um, and just kind of sharing that because I, I feel like a lot of businesses are moving in this way and I think people deserve to know that they have a right to speak up about why or why not they shouldn't do it or at least they should know that it should be a conversation. Hi, Brian Moran. Thanks for joining. So again, me being in these situations where... I thought, hey, um, where I believe that the employer would have my back based on things they asked me to do. Um, I don't yet, I don't still know whether that was naive or if that is in a bona fide expectation that an employee should have in my head, being a business owner and knowing that I may have my own workforce, like legitimate workforce one day, I would never want to put my employees in a situation where they no they don't yeah they don't have your back um i personally because of my value system i would not put my employees in a situation where they felt like somehow their values are up in the air or they're doing something that teeters on being illegal or it's unethical but that's me and so, you know, I guess in a sense, it was me being slightly naive and not realizing that they, you know, weren't going to have my back in this audit. 
that they had asked me to hire these people who weren't otherwise qualified and um, basically left me to be chewed up and spit out by the OFCCP auditor. And so, you know, there are other jobs. I mean, this is like an administrative nightmare um, from an HR perspective. And, you know, certainly this organization, OFCCP, is getting more and more stringent as the years go on. They're just not playing. Um, so I'm kind of glad to be out of that realm. But I think that as an employee, you really have to go into your work, into any job, and be thinking about where do my value system lie? Where does my value system begin and end? And where does the employer fit into that schema? It cannot just be this traditional mindset of, well, they're giving me a job. Well, you know, it could be seen as insubordination or um, I better do it or else. Um, you better do it or else can land you maybe in jail. <laughs> You better do it or else can land you um, in an ethics situation where you're going to have to answer for why you took certain actions. And I think it just comes down to not being so forthright where you're like blatantly just being, you know, that guy or that gal in the office that's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. But you do have to have a conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it just, I'm trying to get people more and more to kind of wrap their minds around, like, if you're in a job where they don't, absolutely not, never compromise for a paycheck. I've never, um, and I've been okay, um, and I, I have not been fired, although I've been threatened many times <laughs> that I would be fired for, you know, not doing what everybody else did. But um, it has to be a conversation, and I'm trying to get people to kind of think about work and where they work as you have a choice. You have a choice. And, like, if your value system says A, B through D, this is what I believe in, this is how I approach things, it should be that. There should You should not be working at an employer that makes you go to the nth extent in the completely different direction from what you believe in. It just shouldn't be, and they shouldn't put you in a situation where you go home at night wondering whether you're making the right decisions or if this can end badly. It's just not a good thing. Absolutely. And it, it, that's what it comes down. It comes down to job security. And I'm pretty sure there's at least one person on this scope now saying, well, you own your own business, Janine. So pretty easy for you to say that, you know, don't worry about job security. The thing is, is what job security is there? Like, is there really true job security these days? I don't think so. So it's kind of like it behooves you Right. <laughs> Absolutely, Brian. So, I mean, it's it's perceived job security because eventually it doesn't end well for you. Um, and, and especially if they're blatantly doing, your mother's a wise woman, Brian Moran. Um, you know, it, it's not going to end well. So while you're trying to be very doting and submissive and, um, you know, the best employee kind of thing. Um, it's just not gonna bode well for you in time because at some point it's either gonna become too much for you to handle, in which case you end up having to leave them anyway. And or in this environment where we've got social media exposing people and, and coworkers exposing other coworkers and just all these kind of privacy glitches it's gonna come out eventually. And when it does, it's probably not going to be good for anybody involved. And I'm pretty certain that the employer is not going to have much to say in your defense. So, I mean, my PSA tonight really is just to go into every situation in your workplaces with the mindset that you're evaluating things, that you're in a constant state of evaluating and that this is a conversation. It's not a directive. 
but we're having a conversation about what the best approach is. And if the best approach and everybody agrees that the best approach is something that's both. I'm glad I have a place for me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, if, you know, everybody just agrees that the best approach is a legal one and an ethical one and one that everybody can sleep with when they go home after five, then we're all good. We can shake hands on it. But if one of those parties, you or the other, is not comfortable with the approach because it lacks in legality, it lacks in being ethical and other things, it's discriminatory, whatever, um, you have to speak up because I don't think this trend is going anywhere and I think we're going to start to see many more individuals being, per being held personally liable for the actions that they take because these regulatory organizations aren't playing. There's just too many injustices, too much sloppiness. Absolutely. I mean, it just eventually it comes to roost. And so like the, that employer that I spoke about, the one that basically threw me under the bus, ran over me several times. And then some literally, I want to say about six months after I left and, and before I left, I was my job was threatened day in and day out. It was a very hostile work environment, but um, six, not even six months, what am I saying? Two months after I left, the director of talent acquisition was demoted. And then four months later, she was gone. The other manager that also was in there kind of giving me the side eye about why I took the action that I did. She was also uh, fired. Yeah, it was a brilliant decision. It really was. And the the VP took many, many more years later, but um, she is now gone. And we haven't heard anything from any of them. They're like gone off the radar, not on the HR scene, not anywhere, not in any organization in the tri-state area that anybody knows of. Because if you work in healthcare, you know that it's a very small community and Everybody knows who's who, and it's just that kind of thing. So um, at the time when all of this was going on, they all felt very confident that they would have. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> we're, one, we're all very curious. You know, the bunch of my colleagues and I that worked there and suffered through the regime that were these people um are wondering where where did they go because it was so interesting back then they couldn't see how what they were doing on a daily basis was just not a forever kind of thing it just could not be sustained and they did a lot of things you know they threatened to fire people there was a lot of um bullying and all kinds of nonsense and uh they I, I certainly hope so, because <laughs> I certainly felt like I was a survivor dealing with their regime when I worked for them. Um, so, you know, they really legitimately thought it was never going to end. They thought they had this thing going, they had a good thing going, and it was just going to go on and on and on. And it, it didn't. It didn't. I'm still here. Um, not any longer working for anybody, working for myself, but I'm still here. And it is, it is. I actually saw something today. I think somebody posted something that said something like, success is rented. Su success is never given, it's rented. And you have to pay for it every day. I just thought it was fascinating. I didn't, I've never heard it put like that before, but I thought it was interesting. Um, and they certainly thought they were successful people and not so much now, so. In parting, I will just say, you know, if you are working for somebody, you should really, really consider thinking about things before you act. I'd love to, I wonder, damn sure isn't me. <laughs> so I don't know who is the landlord. Um, just, yes, true that.
True that. Um, so yes, think, think, think before you take steps. Um, don't blindly be led by anybody, by anybody, because to Brian's point, they're not God if you believe in that. And, uh, and again, because you've got to cover your own behind because nobody's really got your back. And that's not me being pessimistic. It's just a reality. And I think the sooner people kind of grasp onto, yes, if you work for a great employer, then great. You don't have a lot to worry about because, you know, they're going to take, they're going to do the right thing, let's just say. And so if that's the case, great. But if not, you got to cover your behind. You just do. And that means doing the right thing and knowing when the wrong thing is being pushed on you and being courageous enough, in a sense, to uh, push back in a mannerly manner to say, you know, this is not something I'm comfortable with doing. So that's my spiel for tonight. Um, if you would like to know more about me, I talk about these things all the time on my blog, although I've been a little quiet on my blog lately only because I am famished, famished from the year and I just kind of need to reset and recharge. Um, but I will be having some new content on within the next week on some different things. And I discuss this all the time. You better believe it. Brian, you're dropping some nuggets tonight. All right. Love it. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in more commentary on these sorts of topics, you can find me at my blog, The Aristocracy of HR. And that is at thearistocracyofhr.com. You can also find out more about my business at talentthinkinnovations.com. <laughs> I had Chinese too. It was that kind of night. You're too funny. I can't. <laughs> um, so yes, talentthinkinnovations.com. And again, um, with the blog, if you like what you heard tonight, certainly subscribe. There's going to be a lot of new things I'm going to be churning out in 2016 and there's going to be free trainings and webinars and different things than I've done in the four years that I've been doing this. So I'm excited to kind of like refresh and do some different things with it. And hopefully you will join me for the ride. So when you go to the aristocracy of HR.com, you'll have like a little window pop up like boop. And all you have to do is pop in your email and subscribe and you are in there like swimwear. I will keep you abreast of all of the new things and content that I have out there around topics like this. Letaria, I saw you join. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, that's pretty much it for me. I will be here next week. I am going to be talking about the importance of having the right partner when you are trying to achieve great things so like do you have a spouse that's supportive of what you do are you out there and single and looking and thinking about mingling who should that person be based on like what you're trying to achieve are you a business owner are you trying to be an entrepreneur are you trying to rise the ranks so so important to think about who, <laughs> that's what we're supposed to do. So important to kind of think about who you link up with because it makes a difference. And so I'm gonna discuss that next week and I will have that up on the blog so that you can have some supplementary reading and some other ideas to come in with. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> bags trinkets things come on brian this is what you're here for this is what you're here for thank you so much for the hearts i am beyond happy that some new people hopped on including my old people so brian's always there it is retail therapy retail therapy i'm all about it so like brian moran was on that's dope Lateria hopped on it's all good i'm happy i saw teela jackson on here that's super dope. You guys are freaking awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you ever want to watch the replays, if you came in like midway through, 
and you want to watch the replay, you can watch the replay on my YouTube channel at the Aristocracy of HR YouTube. Bye, good night. And you can also catch me on Catch Me. So it's catch, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E forward slash Zarina of HR. Thank you for the hearts. It makes me so happy. I am counting down the days to Christmas. I hope you are too. There's two more shows left in 2015 of Ask Zarina Live. And then we kick it off full-fledged again in 2016. And I hope you will join me. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of the week and a great weekend. And I will see you next week right here, Thursday, 11 p.m. All right? Take care. Bye.